Are there any supplements you can recommend for an adult male for physical strength, power, and recovery? Testosterone has helped me a lot. Is there anything else? So another great question that I get all the time. So first, let me clear the air. I really don't know a lot about testosterone, so I'm kind of broadening this to all supplements. So definitely talk to your doctor about the testosterone and really talk to your doctor before you start or stop any supplements because they can interfere with medications. Um, But broadly speaking, there is no evidence that taking a supplement does physiologically in the body what that same uh, chemical would do if it was naturally produced in our body. So what do I mean is that taking in antioxidants is does not do the same thing when you take it from a supplement that it does when these things are naturally created in your body. I haven't done a ton of research on hormones, so again, I'm not necessarily going to speak about specific hormones, but I do think broadly speaking, it most likely is a waste of money, and I'm speaking specifically to things that are over the counter. Uh, so that would be big picture. Kind of my short answer is no. I don't think there's a whole lot of evidence that supplements work. Now there are a couple of nuances or a couple of caveats to that. Vitamin D. I do know a lot of neurologists that do recommend this for their patients that have MS. I think there's a little bit of data that suggests that vitamin D might have some benefit in slightly changing a disease process, i.e. multiple sclerosis, because that's really the only one I can think of where um, I do see doctors recommend it. So that would be kind of one caveat. But again, even in that vitamin D world, in the presence of multiple sclerosis, there isn't still really strong evidence that it um, changes the disease process a whole lot. Now, all that being said, and I say this probably every month because there's always a question that comes up about supplements or pills or novel treatments, is that there is no magic pill. If there were, there would not be so many people recovering from a stroke right now. There would not be so many people having strokes, really, because if we could take a pill that would just normalize our blood vessels, everyone in this on this earth would take it. So there really is no magic bullet. Now the things that we know do work after a neurologic injury is rewiring the brain. We know this works. There is data that supports that our brains do rewire. We can learn new information. Now, does it rewire as efficiently after a stroke and as we age as it does when we're young? No, probably not but it's really probably the strongest evidence of anything that could potentially improve your movement quality after a stroke or a brain injury or an MS exacerbation. So how do we do that? We practice the things that we want to rewire in our brain. So we practice those movement patterns. What helps that to happen is repetition, doing things over and over and over and over again until that neural network gets hardwired onto our hard drive. And then on top of that, what else works that we know for sure is that taking care of our body, lifestyle factors. So I'm doing a lot of reading right now on mitochondria. I will probably have more videos coming out on that, but mitochondria, very, very simplified, is really the energy producers of all the cells in our body. The more energy that a cell in our body needs, the higher the concentration of mitochondria. So the brain uses a lot of energy. What does it use energy for? neurotransmitter transmission, so how neurons communicate with each other, Uh, remyelination, so the cells that produce myelin use a lot of energy in the brain. And so those two things alone, because they're on the top of that list of kind of energy demand, are so integrated with brain recovery, I feel like the mitochondria are something that we should really pay attention to. So again, the mitochondria produce the energy, which basically what they do is they turn glucose. So our stomach breaks down carbohydrates, and then that turns into glucose, and then glucose is what enters the cells and gets converted into energy in the mitochondria. So 
Why is that so important? Is that we normally just lose mitochondria as we age. So when we're really young, we have a ton of mitochondria. That's why kids are kind of bouncing around. They don't need a lot of sleep sometimes, um, but they're just bundles of energy. It's because they have a ton of mitochondria. The concentration of mitochondria kind of decreases as we age. And then there are a couple of other factors, and this will be important when I get to the supplements, but mitochondria have a shelf life. And we want those mitochondria to be at optimal shelf life. So when mitochondria get overworked or overstressed, they can kind of become less efficient. So they don't produce much as much energy and they start to produce something or they produce more of something called reactive oxygen species, which is a free radical. So free radicals are not good because they are... Uh, unstable molecules and what they basically do is start stealing electrons from other molecules just to kind of keep homeostasis in the brain so you're you have this kind of like giving away and stealing kind of process going on in the brain and that causes damage causes damage to the dna causes damage to the cells it causes damage to the mitochondria themselves and it causes inflammation and something we call oxidative stress so i've done a video on that so you guys have heard me talk about that so oxidative stress is not good because when what that means you have too many free radicals and when that starts to happen mitochondria become even less efficient uh, and they die prematurely even faster so now your concentration of mitochondria is decreasing what does that mean that means less energy to do those critical functions in your brain that you want to happen when you're in this recovery process so why do I tell you all of that is there are lifestyle factors that you can do we know that when you're consuming more energy than your body actually needs ie calories that kind of overwhelms mitochondria so that's number one is getting that calorie balance in in order the other thing is is eating high density or high nutrient dense foods now the reason that's important is because nutrient dense foods first of all, will minimize the amount of kind of what we call ultra-processed foods that you eat. So that's number one, and I'll get to ultra-processed foods in a minute. But the other reason that nutrient-dense foods matter is that is probably more realistic way of getting in those vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that are actually going to be able to be used by your body. So that's another reason why that's important. But now getting to that ultra-processed foods, why eating nutrient-dense foods, if it decreases the amount of ultra-processed foods, ultra-processed foods are known to be addictive, and they are meant to make you eat a lot of them. So you people that eat a lot of ultra-processed foods just inherently consume more calories. So nutrient dense foods, you'll minimize the ultra processed foods and you'll really protect those mitochondria. Now the other thing is is exercise. Exercise we know is so 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 valuable. Why? Because when your body is using energy, it, it demands more energy. It needs to create more energy. And what happens when you're in that state is that you're mitochondria are going to try and turn over or try and multiply during times of exercise or when your body is de demanding more energy then that will facilitate those mitochondria to become more efficient and potentially kind of reproduce as well and then the other thing that's kind of controversial is intermittent fasting now the way intermittent fasting might work for some people not everyone there are some downsides to intermittent fasting so i'm not saying this to start anything but this is or for you to do anything but maybe have a conversation with your doctor intermittent fasting is where you go periods of time without food and what you're basically doing is when you're depriving your food uh, of a body of food your glucose levels drop when your glucose levels drop first what happens is your body will pull glucose from fat cells which is beneficial um, but what also happens is that when your glucose levels drop is your mitochondria again will try and become more efficient with fewer resources and then that just kind of carries over into when you're in a fueled state your your cells are just working more efficiently because they had to learn how to work in that deprived state the other thing that we know happens with intermittent fasting is something called autophagy which is like a recycling system in our brain there's also something called mitophagy which are very similar 
similar. So autophagy is when your cells will, in a state of calorie deprivation or starvation, your um, cells will take broken pieces or take cells that are dying, kind of put them together and turn them into a healthy cell. Mitochondria do the same thing. So your mitochondria will kind of take maybe mitochondria that aren't as efficient, recycle those into healthy cells. That all occurs during that fasted state. So that's one potential benefit way far above and beyond taking any supplement. That's why I'm bringing it up. The other thing in light of or instead of supplements is sleep. Getting good quality sleep our body produces or releases, secretes um, growth hormone when we're sleeping and getting good quality sleep. Uh, there's it, it regulates uh, ghrelin and leptin, which are two hormones that are released that um, tell our brain when we're hungry and when we're full, and those get really dysregulated when you're not getting good quality sleep. The other thing that has some evidence is that melatonin can sometimes be neuroprotective, so that's another reason why good quality sleep matters. Melatonin is released in darkness and is released while we're sleeping. So maybe there's a neuroprotective effect of that, as well as there's some evidence that we consolidate memories. So actually the exercises you're performing during the day might kind of that hard wiring process might actually occur, occur more at night after that exercise session. So that's another reason why sleep is so, so, so important. And then the other thing in light of supplements is getting morning sunlight. One is that regulates your sleep cycle. So we have something called a circadian rhythm where we have kind of a built-in sleep-wake cycle in our system. And when you get sunlight early in the morning, it kind of sets that circadian rhythm. So from the time you get that morning sunlight, you'll start to get sleepy. I think it's like 14 to 16 hours later. So that's another reason why uh, getting that morning sunlight might actually help to improve your sleep. The other thing that sunlight does is it exposes you to vitamin D or there's a potential that you can get vitamin D naturally. So that's the other benefit of sunlight and then getting um, drinking at minimum of five glasses of water a day making sure to cut that off two hours before bedtime so it doesn't interfere with your sleep, and not drinking alcohol and not smoking anything because those are known to disrupt your sleep. The alcohol is known to disrupt your sleep, and smoking increases neuroinflammation, increases that oxidative stress, and creates might cause more damage to that mitochondria. So those are the lifestyle factors that I would put far above and beyond any supplement. So I know that your question I think was probably more about testosterone, but because I don't know a lot about testosterone, I think these other things are so, so valuable. Those would be my recommendations instead of potentially a supplement. But once again, I can't stress this enough. Don't start or stop a supplement without talking to your doctor because they can interfere. Even over-the-counter supplements can interfere with medications. If you liked that video, check out these two videos down here. If you want even more support or ideas on how to improve your overall health and movement quality, check out our gold membership program. As a member of that program, you will get access to over 300 exercises that are not here on YouTube, as well as access to our monthly live Q&A where you can get your specific questions answered. I enjoyed spending time with you all today, and I will see you here on YouTube in the next video.